It's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Chief, Bart Brunchine. Hey, this is the Chief from the Dice Tower, and we're going to be talking about a Kickstarter game. And a Kickstarter game that I don't think would have, well, Mob Ties. I don't think Mob Ties would have come out if uh, Kickstarter hadn't been around. This is basically playing a graphic novel. Uh, about the mob. Um, the artwork reminds me of graphic novels. Uh, the brutality in it reminds me of a graphic novel. Um, the gameplay is negotiation, so there's a, kind of an open-ended, you know, it all depends on the, the group that you're going to play with. Um, we'll go in and take a closer look. I'm going to show you some close-up um, like pictures or stills of some of the cards. So I will tell you, since the Dice Tower is family friendly, um, this game is supposed to be 13 and up, kind of like a PG-13, I think. Some of the art uh, could be offensive. So if, uh, if you don't want to see, I think they got a guy that's like getting his teeth pulled out. <laughs> they got another one that a guy's getting shanked in prison. It is graphic novel, comic book art, so it's not like it's real photos or anything. But if you're offended by any of that, not only will you not want to play this game, you probably won't want to watch any more of the review. So I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, and that's the reason why uh, the, uh, the guys that did this uh, did it for Kickstarter. Apparently some companies liked it, but they wanted them to tone down the visual violence and they weren't having that, so they just put it out on Kickstarter. Um, it didn't get backed real heavily. It just got backed enough to get made. Um, so, you know, I might say something kind of about how Kickstarter is and how the game is. So let's go in and take a closer look. All right, first I'm going to give you just an overview of the uh, map board here. Right here is what they call the heat meter. I'll explain that in a little bit, but basically as more feds come out onto the board, this heat meter will go up and the game ends when you reach uh, the top of the heat meter. Um, as more feds come on, uh, there's more difficulty for the players. Looking at the board here, um, we got the Don's Mansion. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, see if I can get a good shot on it. And I might just take some still pictures of these as well. So we got the Don's Mansion. We're going to have Little Italy. The Meat Locker. Of course, just looks like a meat locker. You've actually got the streets, which even though it's not a photo, it's just kind of like a little area uh, in the on the board. You actually can spend some time in the streets instead of being in one of the locations. Uh, this is the prison. You've got the diner. This is a dirty cop in here. I know you can't see it real well, but that's a dirty cop. I'll explain that in a little bit. You got the docks. And up here, which is where a lot of the people in my group, including a female that was playing, spent a lot of time. Kitties. Strip club. It's a mob game. you got to, of course, have a strip club. You do have a, uh, an airfield, which isn't played in the basic game. I've only played the basic. Um, apparently, there's some talk about maybe having different cities that you can travel to and from or expansions, and that'll come into play. Uh, and then the advanced, apparently, you can escape or get some of your guys out of harm's way by sending them out on the plane. And I didn't cover the morgue. So when one of your guys gets killed, he ends up going up into the morgue. So um, let me zoom in just on the diner since we got it right in front of me here. And I'll show you basically, um, I'm not going to go into all the rule play, but you can do some movement and uh, you get your guys basically into different areas of the city. And when they're in there, what you're doing is... Uh, uh, what's called a show of respect. I'm going to throw another one in here so I can show you. Um, the way it goes is uh, a round starts off where you start at the Don's Mansion and whoever has the most of their characters in there, if you notice, this happens to be the Hitman and the Maid Man. And if you see up in the corner here, they have a number value. That's the amount of respect they, uh, they demand or that they get. And there's basically, um, you tally those up and uh, whoever has the most respect will get the racket which is the money that's in that location or if you're at the don's mansion you will end up being the don for that round but here's where it gets interesting um let's say we had blue here has four respect because they're two guys 
if we put them back down on there but if you had yellow yellow only has three with their two guys um, but if they join in with purple who has two which they can do they can negotiate they can do whatever they want you know purple can say hey uh, just give me two grand on this location and I'll come in and vote with you we'll have a total of uh, five and we can beat out blue and blue won't get anything um, you don't have to make it a sweetheart deal um, yellow could go to purple and say um, if you don't vote for me I've got a card and I'll show you these cards in a little bit I've got a card that will uh, kill you and if you don't come in on my side when we get to the action phase I'm gonna kill you because uh, when you get into it the action phases anybody that's in the same room you can take actions against them so uh, I could be bluffing and not have any cards at all but to be telling you the truth the cards are all pretty violent so about at any time someone can do something violent to somebody else so you can bully around you can try to negotiate you can make deals you can make short-term deals you can make long-term deals one of the games I played, the guy just said hey I'll vote with you but I'm gonna ask for a favor at some point in time <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool and uh, there is a rule segment that says uh, it's like a, a little uh, token you have and when the token says uh, Oh, I can't remember what it says, but it'll say like uh, all deals are ironclad. It means you, part of the game rule is you can't break deals that you make in the game. And then the other side is something like all bets are off. I actually like that. I mean, you can lie. Uh, you can say, you know what? Screw you. I'm not giving you the favor. Matter of fact, I'm going to use a card and I'm going to kill you. So that is how the game is designed. Again, if you're playing with a group of people, my wife will not play this game. I don't even think she likes being in the same room with it uh, because the titles on the card when you play them are kind of violent. Speaking of titles on the card. Well, before I do that, let me show you a little player aid that you got. Every player gets a little aid here. It works out your, your turns real quick, your turn phases. I know I don't have an HD camera, sorry. Phase one is the election. That's done in the Don's Mansion. It's going to be who, whoever's the Don. The Don's important. First of all, you get a little ring that you, you wear. The Don gets to break all ties. Um, uh, so you can swing things in your favor. And you get to do all the actions first. Sometimes that can actually work against you. But sometimes you can take somebody out before they can hurt you. Uh, you then go down to phase two, which is business. That's when you go around to all the different businesses. And you get your money or you get your racket. Phase three is movement. You can move one of your characters somewhere else or movement in the street, which will, of course, affect the uh, votes and the show of respects that are going on. Phase four is the feds. You actually draw a fed card. I'll show you one a little bit later. And on the fed card, uh, it'll tell you like where the feds are paying more attention. Um, and you put little fed markers on there. If you ever get four fed markers in any one location, there is going to be an arrest. So what happens is you do yet another show of respect and whichever color loses uh, if they have more than one player in there they get to pick one guy and he goes to prison so then have your action phase which is where uh, you play your cards yeah, phase six is bail that's where you can actually pay money to get your guys back out of prison it's pretty expensive and phase seven is the heat that's where you just judge if the heat meter is going to go up uh, the heat meter going up means that you're going to end up having more fed cards drawn so it's kind of like when you have an epidemic and pandemic and, and uh, things get a little bit worse as you have more cards. This help aid is perfect. First of all, you shows you all your little characters, shows you uh, how much money they're going to be worth at the end of the game, which is the same amount of money it'll take to bail them out. So your Capos worth 75000 takes that much to bail them out. He's got an influence of three. Your Hitman, influence of two, Made Man two. The other thing down here is you'll see these little red circles, these red tokens. Those symbols are on the cards. Um, some players can only use some attack cards, some can't. And uh, the blue is a defense marker, the little green briefcase is specialty, and uh, the little yellow weapon deal is what you use to attack the feds. So, and then um, they've got some explanations and then even some hints on the back side of the card that I'm not gonna go into. So the cards are great. It helped all the players get into the game really quick. So let me show you some of the cards. All right, here is Shanked. And it's a guy getting shanked in prison. You can basically play this if somebody's got a dude in prison, 
Uh, you can play this down and you can have him shanked and he leaves the prison and goes to the morgue. Once a player's uh, little piece is in the morgue, he can never get him back. This is pretty brutal. I've seen this used as payback, so somebody will do something to you um, in a, one of the different locations of the city, and you may not be able to do anything back in that part of the city, but you can sure play this down if they got one of their guys locked up and do a little payback in prison. Hookers in the trunk. This is why my wife doesn't like to be around when I'm playing this game. Um, basically, you play this on another character, and it gets his guy locked up. So, and it's a picture of some guys getting arrested and some cops finding dead hookers that are all kind of mangled up in a trunk. Hence the warning on the game. Meat Grinder. Um, you literally get to view a target player and uh, player's cash and his favor cards. So what normally is secret is no longer secret because your guys have tortured the player by putting his hand in a meat grinder. Can you say violent? This is a kill card. Uh, this one is a, uh, the umpire basically turns into an assassin and has uh, some kind of made man or some kind of uh, gangsters welcoming his son in for the home run or whatever. There will be an assassination. It's brutal. Fed to the pigs. This is the cover of the game, so I had to include it in. This one's really powerful. It's a four. How these attack cards work is you play it on somebody and if they have a defense card, which is a blue shield, I don't have any of them handy, they have to at least equal or exceed the value of the attack. Four is very hard to defeat. So if you're getting fed to the pigs, uh, your guy's pretty much dead. Fall from grace. Um, be quite honest with you, I just love the artwork on here. The guy actually, they've drawn him in such a way it looks like he's falling. And you can see the guys on top of the roof that threw him off. Um, graphic novel art. I mean, this could literally be right out of a comic. Here's a Fed card. Uh, this is what you can do if the Feds are coming down and they're going to make an arrest. If you had a card with this little symbol in here, you can instead kill some of the Feds that are coming in. This is AK-47. and They show a bunch of cops or Feds being shot. I'm a cop, so yes, this is violent. Um, take it as what it is. Again, it's a graphic novel. I mean, unfortunately, mobs kill cops. This is not a reality game. It's just a fake game. So, but yeah, brutal imagery. I'm a cop and it's showing cops getting killed. So, uh, the guys that played with me, all but one of them were cops. Uh, so I told them what they were getting into. They understood. So, um, that's a little bit of a look into what the cards look like. That's a real general overview on what the game is, but really it's just wash and repeat. You go around, the goal is to earn money. You want to earn the most money. So you don't want to be bailing your guys out. That costs money. Your guys getting killed means you're not going to get the money at the end of the game. And uh, they get arrested, same deal. So um, you do have a chance to get them out of prison. But if there, there's a mechanic that if there's too many people in the morgue, too many people in prison, they're basically wiped out or taken to fed prison or whatever, moves the heat meter up, and then you go again, and you start another round. So that's your closer look. Again, the main deal here is to look at the artwork. Um, I didn't show you the money. There's paper money. I actually like paper money. Um, the colors on this were a little hard to discern. I wish they'd been a little clearer. They did do a cool aspect. The money is kind of like it's been splattered with blood. Um, but if I do have a criticism, it was just this. I had a hard time kind of telling the denominations apart based on their colors. I wish the colors would have been a little bit more distinct. Um, but that's nitpick. I mean, the rest of the art on here is just plain gorgeous. So, all right, let's go to the review. It's exactly what I expected and exactly what I wanted. Um, Undead Viking did a review of this. I had been looking at it, and he did a review on it when it was up on Kickstarter. They sent him a review copy. I had been looking at it, but I'm not a huge mob guy, and negotiation style games are kind of hit and miss. Um, You've got to really have a group of people that understands they are almost role-playing what's going on in a negotiation game. Uh, I've got a few friends that take negotiation games kind of serious and they get mad. If It's also a take that game and they, they literally will personally get mad if you hammer them too hard. I can't play those or these games with them. So the, the game is limited in who I'll play it with or how often it'll hit the table. 
and even when I do play it with a group, I kind of tell them, hey, this has got some heavy art, uh, killing, it's negotiations, we're going to be beating each other up, and if they go into it in the right frame of mind, it's awesome. So keep that in mind. I like the game. I think the art's great. Um, I think the production values are phenomenal. Um, and it's a real good mob tie theme. And if you like negotiations, I think you're going to like this. It is hard to get, um, but hopefully they'll make some more copies. So I like mob ties. See you guys. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.